Thank you for joining us this Friday morning. And we are at Victory Field in this beautiful, beautiful, cloudy, peaceful day with the sun peeking through the clouds. And I'm here with Corina. We have one more person coming. They can just settle down when they arrive. So let's come into a comfortable place together. And allow your bodies to feel the earth beneath you. Invite a sense of softening into the earth. An opening to the spaciousness all around you. Allow the experience of sensation within the body to be felt. Any sense of constriction around the breath can be noticed and held in your awareness. And invite a gentle sense of holding to anything that arises within you. Maybe you even notice and say welcome to whatever you notice. Human beings have been taught that good experiences are preferable to discomfort. And it's a matter of simply allowing your awareness to welcome both experiences the pleasurable ones and the uncomfortable ones as an expression of life itself. And in my experience, it's been helpful not to take things that arise personally and just kind of see them as Life is happening. Not an easy task, but one can practice opening up to what's coming, softening the body, feeling the earth, Feeling the breath. And inviting a sense of settling down inside the heart. And finding this deep embrace. that is you, all that is you that arises within you is embraced in this big open armed awareness.
every bird sound that arises in the moment. You can imagine it saying, help. Held. One more deep in breath. And let it go. One more time. Take your time to start to move the body in a way that feels natural to you. And anything that arose within the body can now start to move with the movement so that you're inviting this constriction or anything that came up for air, anything that came up to be seen and noticed and met can now start to dance within the movement. So the tightness or the numbness or the experience of pleasure itself can now start to move. And let the body for the first couple of minutes just experience movement that is unstructured and un unguided so that Wherever it feels like it needs a stretch or it needs a movement, that it gets it. It gets it without having to do anything it doesn't want. Making your way to a seated position if you're not there already. And opening the practice together with the sound of Om. Rub the palms together. Invite them to rest on the heart. Meet yourself where you are. Meet yourself where you are. Welcome. Opening with the sound of Om, a cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Oh. Take your time to slowly reach your arms overhead. Make fists with your hands to circle your wrists around. Three times to one side, three times to the other. Allow your bodies to make it into a table pose. Hi, Siobhan, welcome. And let the body meet the ground on all fours and start to establish the 
expansiveness of the palms so that you're separating your fingers wide enough to feel the entire kind of palm on the ground and begin to arch and curl a few times each time raising the tailbone upwards and opening up the chest and then curling and tucking tailbone under as you exhale A rocking of the tailbone side to side as you separate your knees and start to access the inner thighs and the inner hips. Shift back and forth a couple of times. Maybe you walk your hands a couple of handprints forward or circle the hips around into semicircles to the right and to the left. And as you do this, notice the areas in the hips that are tight and breathe into them. Notice the areas of the lower back that need motion. And attend to those. Make your way into drawing the hips all the way back to your heels. Allow the elbows to rest on underneath your shoulders. And rock the head side to side. Look over towards the right and towards the left. Down and up. Either stay here for a child pose or make your way all the way into a full child pose with the chest releasing down to the ground and the arms expanding forward Allow the body to return back into a table pose. Keep the knees separated, though, while you stack your left shoulder on top of your right. I'm sorry, your, <laughs> that would have been funny. Stack your left shoulder on top of your left wrist. And open up to the side as you inhale. And circle the arm around a few times. Maybe it's through the elbow itself. And at some point, expand all the way with an in-breath and thread it through with the out-breath. Let's do it again a couple of times. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Switch arms. Land the right hand down. Open to the side with some circular motion. And thread through a few times. A couple more times, in and out. Come back into your table pose. As you return to table pose, make your way into downward dog. Curl the toes under, extend the 
hips up and back. I like to place my hands directly on the grass and my feet as well. I use a little blanket and I kind of move it back so that I can play around with it when I'm on the ground. I can place it underneath my body, but remove it when I'm off the ground. And what that does for my body is that it gives the hands the stability and the feet the stability that the, and the traction they need. Start to pedal the feet a few times, allow the experience of hands and feet on the ground to really acknowledge this earth and the solidity it provides us with, shifting back and forth, or any motions of pedaling and releasing neck and shoulders are relaxed. Make your way back into a forward fold by walking the hands towards your feet, resting into a little bit of a squat to begin with, with the elbows on top of the thighs. And then allow each knee at a time to go forward as you rock the hips to one side and then to the other. So right knee goes forward slightly, tailbone tilts over towards the right. And then left knee goes forward slightly as the right leg extends slightly and the tailbone towards the left. And there's kind of like this just little bit of motion happening to release into the hips. Maybe you bend and extend through the legs to prepare for an easeful forward fold, knowing that your elbows can stay on your thighs without fully releasing down. Two more breaths. Allow the body to slowly rise to stand. I like to squat down a little and activate the feet into the ground firmly before rising. Two arms expand overhead. Reaching all the way up, look up. And start to reach up with the right side of the body like you're about to grab something that's so high up, pull it down and then lift upwards with the left side of the body. And when you do this, notice how you have to kind of side bend to the right a little and take that more and more into a side bend. Maybe the hips start to rock more towards one side and then the other. And let the side bending kind of turn into some shoulder motions or anything else. Letting those shoulders work themselves into a little bit of an unstructured side bending. It's a different style of practicing yoga, which allows a little bit more freedom in the cueing. 
you can do that or you can do what you're used to doing if that gives you comfort. Bring your hands to heart space eventually. Ground yourself into the earth. Imagine your crown opening up to the heavens. And experience space inside and outside. And with the next in-breath, we'll flow to arms reach overhead, deep inhale. On the exhale, palms come through the third eye, down into the heart space as you bow, forward fold. Take a halfway lift where you plant your hands on your shins. As you release the hands down, walk them forward to come into a plank pose. Press the floor away, engage the legs. Lower the knees and lower the chest all the way to the ground. Open your heart for baby cobra pose, drawing the shoulders back, squeezing shoulder blades muscles. Activate your legs. Inhale. On the exhale, press yourself back up to downward dog and feel the expansiveness throughout the back body, the entire back body now. Take a deep in breath as you reach your right leg up towards the sky. Bend and extend the leg as you open up into a three-legged dog. Resquare the hips as you elongate the legs with the in breath. Out breath, knee to the chest, curl. Inhale, long leg, back up towards the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, curl. Step foot to right thumb. Find your crescent lunge, bending back knee, tucking pelvis under, inhale. Reach those arms overhead. As you reach all the way up, plant the palms together and draw them down through the third eye towards the chest. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach. The next time that they come down towards the chest, dip down with the back leg. Inhale, rise. Keep the feet hip distance so that when you dip down, you are comfortable. Again. Sturdy body, pulling inwards towards that inner core, last time in, and out breath, bend, dip, rise up with the in breath, on the out breath, palms come to heart space, and you hinge forward, drawing the hips back. Make your way into a runner lunge. You might walk your back foot even more. And twist over to the right. You might keep your fingertips on the ground as you reach the right arm up and twist from the mid back. Or you might drop the back knee down. Reach up higher, in breath and out breath. Now activate both feet firmly into the ground and find your way into a vertical twist. So you're gonna reach the chest up, bend the back knee slightly, and lift the torso. Deep in breath. On the out breath, dial the back heel down and open it up into warrior two. Make your fists, circle your wrists. And reverse your warrior. Okay. 
Bring yourself into a side angle lunge, hinging towards the right side. Keep active in the right forearm as you expand your left arm up. Feel the expression of breath. Notice your neck and soften it. You might even make some micro movements throughout the neck. One more inhale. On the exhale, we'll return back to runner lunge. Toe heel the right foot towards the right a little more. Drop the back knee and bend and extend through that front leg a few times. Maybe you hold that hamstring stretch at some point. As you return towards the center in your runner lunge, keeping the back knee down, toe heel the right foot towards the right. Get the toes to come off the mat maybe, toes are facing sideways. And either stay here or curl the back toes under, extend the back leg for lizard pose. Maybe some micro movements are available. Maybe it's a holding of the pose to your degree of comfort. One more deep in breath. And the out breath coming up to your hands if you're not there. And slowly extending the right leg back into a three-legged dog one more time. Circle the ankle around. And release the right leg down. Bend the knees, draw the hips back, look forward with the in-breath. On the out-breath, either walk or float forward, coming into a forward fold. Take a breath in together, and let it go. We'll flow all the way up with the in-breath. With the out-breath bowing, hands come through the third eye to the heart space as you bow forward. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, plant palms, step back. Finding your plank pose, solidify. Then decide if the knees wanna come down for Shataranga all the way to the ground, or if they wanna stay lifted for a low push-up. If you came all the way down, take a baby cobra, inhale. If not, maybe an upward facing dog, if it's available to you. Pressing through to downward dog. Deep in breath, let it go. Left leg rises up to find that three-legged dog. and bending and extending the left leg in your three-legged dog. Square the hips with the in-breath. The out-breath brings the knee to the chest. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee to chest, step forward, crescent lunge. Bending back knee, tucking pelvis under. Reach those arms overhead, breath in. On the breath out as the palms come towards the chest, dip. In. Out. Three more. Good. Rise up, inhale. 
Exhale, dial back, heel down, warrior two. Come back to your crescent. Come back to your crescent. It was in the sequence. Come back to your crescent. Palms to heart space as you hinge forward. Lower the hands down into your crescent for a twist to the left. Take it in and out, activate both feet firmly into the ground. And pretty soon we're gonna rise up into a vertical twist. So activate that left heel even more strongly into the ground as you rise. Take it in together. And out together. Now, dial the back heel down and open it up into your warrior two. Look to the left, look to the right. Loosen up throughout your shoulders and your wrists. Then expand yourself into a reverse warrior in breath. Coming back through the center for a side angle. Hinge, hinge while you keep your feet nice and firm in the ground. We're going to return into a runner lunge. Feet are hip distance apart. Back knee drops. Back and forth shifting into the hamstring. Mm, slowly preparing to find lizard pose. As you toe heel, the left foot towards the left. Toes are facing the left corner. Hands come to the inside. Maybe back leg curls toes under and expands further back. Notice if you're collapsing into it and see if you can maintain a certain pressing away from the floor, a certain hugging in into the joints so that the muscles are activating around the joints. and take any micro motions that feel appropriate for you. Ooh. He's a very slimy worm. He's like right next to me and he's actually pretty cool. Slithering. Just minding his own business. We can coexist. Good. As you slowly make your way back into a three-legged dog. Activate both hands equally into the earth. And slowly release back. Down into one downward dog. Taking back and forth shifts into either walking forward or hopping forward. And find a deep forward fold now. Maybe you grab a hold of the big toes with the first two fingers and kind of surround them with the first two fingers and the thumb. As you draw the elbows sideways, see if you can kind of let go of the stress around the shoulders and the neck and make that fold happen from a, uh, an engagement in the pelvic floor, a release down of the torso, but without too much pulling. Two more breaths, in and out. Mm, 
And as we slowly rise up, activate feet into ground, squat down a little, and we rolling up a little bit at a time. Meeting in a standing position together. Take your weight and shift it into the right leg, into the left leg, rather. And the right knee is going to start to go side to side as you get onto your tippy toe. And see what that kind of starts to create in the lower back and in the hip area. For me, it feels really lovely. And at some point, we'll come into tree pose. So as you draw the knee to the side, maybe the foot comes to the ankle or a little higher or above the knee. Now, as soon as you find that connection, activate leg against leg. So foot against thigh, thigh against foot in my case. Notice if your actual right foot is on the knee and if that is on the knee, then lift it up or lower it a little. Now we take care of the upper body. So the lower body is firm, the foot is active, the legs are engaging, the glutes are working. And now we try to find that neutral spine so that you're not arching back or you're just elongating the tailbone down, pulling navel in and up. And the shoulders are so relaxed. Today I invite you to kind of Take any arm variations that feel like sturdy for you. The one that stabilizes the balance most is bringing palms together and pressing them against one another. You might take other variations like grabbing a hold of opposite elbows behind the back and expanding yourself higher up. Notice if you're locking your right, your left knee, micro bended, engage your left glute more. Good job, come back into balance. This time bringing the knee towards the chest, giving it a little bit of a squeeze. I'm aware the left leg is starting to feel fiery. That's the point. Feel the fire, imagine how strong it's getting. And we'll take a airplane position. Draw the hips back, elongate the right leg back. Hands can stay at the chest. Relax your shoulders a lot. And breathe for five. Four, stay active in your left heel. Three, two, one. Land the foot hip distance apart. Extend both legs. Now get those hips to face forward and bow for Parshvottanasana, activating feet apart. Elongate the chest forward and twist into a revolved triangle. Maybe the left arm expands up eventually. It's harder for me to do without a block. So maybe we activate the feet so firmly to lift even higher so that there's barely any weight on that right fingertips. Come back to the center and make your way into a standing split. Shift your weight into the left leg. Raising the right leg up. Now square the hips, bend the right knee, pull the right knee to the left calf muscle. Stay with me, this is gonna be hard. Activate right knee against left calf muscle. Keep your weight in the left heel. 
lift your chest slightly hands come back to the chest the left leg is shaking left glute is working and slowly release back down into a forward fold rise up and shake through the left leg good rock hip side to side circle them around and let's take it to the other side your weight goes to the right leg we take the knee side to side getting acquainted with that left hip find your ground in the right foot all three corners of that foot and come into your tree variation toes can even stay on the ground as you lift the leg if you go further notice if your left hip is rising higher than your right and see if you can keep them equal that can inform where your foot lands neutral spine relaxed shoulders find your breath notice where you're efforting see if you can find strength from inside without the efforting for me it's an activation of the glutes pulling navel in and up and digging the right foot into the ground and a pressing of leg against leg as the arms may be open wide now maybe the sternum can lift upwards towards the sky your gaze can stay forward or can look up Ooh, as you look up you might fall And now preparing to return into a balance left knee to the chest maybe giving it a squeeze keeping your right knee micro bent your right glutes strongly engaged as you come into airplane notice how when you're balancing you are not thinking about anything else you can't or you actually lose the balance stay aware of the firmness of the right heel on the ground three two one land the foot hip distance apart and bow for Parshvottanasana pyramid pose I love that word, Parshvottanasana. And as you hinge forward and back maybe a couple of times to find your most comfortable placement of the foot, you might readjust the placement of the front foot. And then setting the hips nicely and equal bowing forward and getting ready for that revolved triangle as the left fingertips remain on the ground I like to grab a hold of the hip crease on the right side and eventually twist to the right Return back to the center. Relax your neck. 
Then shift forward into that standing split. Bring your left knee behind your right calf. Draw your butt back, all the way back, so that you're almost like sitting in a virtual seat. Balance on your right foot. Either keep hands on the ground or lift your chest for five, four, three, two, one. Release in a forward fold. Rise up. Shake that right leg. Rock through the hips and circle. Beautiful. Now make your way slowly into a seated position. And let your body hit the ground, making space for your legs as you separate the legs a little bit wider. Rock the knees side to side a couple of times. And then cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh. If there is no sensation here, start to walk the left foot back towards your hip and lifting your chest a little bit higher. If there's plenty of sensation, stay where you are. Flex the ankle. And activate again, ankle against thigh, thigh against ankle. If this is not giving you enough of um, a stretch, you can come into a double pigeon. For some of us, it's plenty. And just kind of open yourself up to the stretch itself while your heart remains soft and your shoulders remain soft. And see if you can kind of find that place where we're not necessarily trying to find our maximum everything. We're just feeling satisfied with a good enough sensation. It doesn't have to be extreme. Enough is plenty. That's what my teacher Abby used to say to me when I first started practicing yoga. Enough is plenty. As you slowly release the right leg, extend it forward, plant it on the ground and find Janushirshasana, left sole of the foot to inner thigh. You either stay where you are or you hinge forward from the hips into a forward fold. Allow your body to slowly come back to the center. 
and taking your seated pigeon on the other side. Left ankle crosses. And positioning of the foot where it feels appropriate for you. Check in with your neck and shoulders. Check in with your heart space. With your jaw. Are you tightening anywhere in the body where it's not necessary to tighten? Find your breath. Soften around it. Held. Safe and held. As you slowly come out of the pose, extend the left leg forward, preparing for Janashirshasana on the other side. If your right knee needs support underneath it, you place something. And going forward to your degree. Micro bend in the left knee is active. Heel is active. Slowly come on out of the stretch. Making your way onto your backs. Take one final movement or pose on your backs. I like the idea of a reclining twist. Anything else is welcome. As you finally come into your Shavasana, notice if your knees need to be bent to be more comfortable. If so, you can rest them against one another. And find freedom, find this freedom that is your birthright. came into this world with. Find a 
it in the space on the inside and outside. It's the same space permeating all of existence. Find it in the gentle caressing of this benevolent energy. A full embrace held. Maybe become aware of your surroundings, all of nature, other human beings, furry beings. All of it is being permeated by the same intelligence. deep in breath together. Let it go. Decide if you'd rather stay reclined for the close of our class, or if you'd rather roll over on your side. If you rolled over on your side, make your way into seated position once again. Bringing hands to heart space. You find the humility within humility, this sense of awe and kind of even smallness that, that just acknowledges the incredible, humongous universe.
And with that deep kind of reverence, sense of reverence, and bowing and honoring, we close the practice with the sound of Om. A cleansing breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Thank you for allowing me to teach you today, and namaste.